Hi, this is Matt Stone of 180 Degree Health, and today we're going to talk about fiber, fibre. <laughs> um, originally, I had some misconceptions about fiber. Uh, I read Constantine Monastersky's Fiber Menace, and I thought he had some compelling arguments. Um, you know, I did a lot of research on native diets, um, and I came across, you know, diets of Eskimos and the Maasai tribe and people who didn't eat any fiber at all, and they seemed to have great digestion, they didn't have any digestive problems. And so I started to develop this, uh, this belief that fiber was, you know, no big deal, and uh, there was no really redeeming health quality to it, and it didn't have anything to do with healthy digestion or anything like that. And while it is true that people ate diets without fiber and they didn't have any health problems. Um, I am willing to consider the fact that there may be some advantages to eating a lot of fiber. And certainly if you're going to eat a high carbohydrate diet with a lot of plant foods in that diet, I think it's almost unavoidable uh, that, that the fiber content of the diet needs to be pretty significant. Um, or at least that there might be some advantages to it being significant. Um, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about the first myth um, <clears throat> really when it comes to high fiber diets is that you know because it expands in your stomach and it takes up space and it has bulk uh, it decreases your appetite. Well that's you know that may be true for a meal. I know if I eat uh, you know a bunch of broccoli I certainly get really full with that giant mass of food even though it doesn't have many calories. However, um, you know, if I eat nothing but broccoli for several days, uh, I get ravenously hungry and weak and feeble because I'm not consuming very many calories. So in the short term, yes, uh, fiber has bulk and it expands in your stomach and you'll probably lose weight uh, for a day or two uh, when you increase the fiber in your diet. And we know that if you increase uh, fiber and if they study uh, you know, increasing fiber in someone's diet, yes, they voluntarily and spontaneously eat less at those meals and they stay fuller longer. But again, this is very, very short term and it doesn't take into consideration the real uh, appetite and energy regulation systems of the body, such as leptin, which is really the master and commander and it has a lot more to do uh, with, with regulating your body temperature, your total metabolic expenditure, your energy levels, whether you're storing fat and all different kinds of things. Um, so, you know, something that influenced the, the macro, the big uh, energy regulation functions in your body, that's a big deal. Um, but something that just kind of fills you up, uh, you know, just because it's, you know, bulkier, uh, and less calorie dense, that's really a short term thing and it's insignificant. But again, that's the platform that fiber is championed on, uh, is that it really helps you lose weight because it makes you feel fuller when you consume a meal that's high in fiber. Nonsense. However, however, uh, there appears to be ample evidence that fiber has an inherent properties that are much more significant in terms of weight loss they're just making you feel full when you eat a meal. For example, uh, propionic acid, which is a type of fatty acid that the fermentation of fiber um, creates in your digestive tract, this short chain fatty acid uh, potentially, uh, not potentially, but has been shown to increase leptin and it's been shown to decrease another hormone known as resistin. Now resistin, there's a lot of controversy surrounding resistin. Resistin was discovered, I believe, in 2001. And resistin is found, uh, you know, when you uh, increase resistin, you become more insulin resistant. And uh, so we know that uh, there could be potentially a huge link between resistin and high levels of resistin and, uh, and metabolic syndrome and type 2 diabetes and weight gain and all the things that come along with insulin resistance. Propionic acid, when it, it comes into contact with fat cells in the tissue, is known to decrease resistant levels and decrease insulin resistance uh, and also increase leptin which raises your metabolism, also has a similar impact in that it decreases insulin resistance and so forth. So it has a different kind of appetite reduction effect. 
the creation of this propionic acid. And propionic acid is not something you really consume a lot of in your food. It has kind of a foul odor and uh, lo and behold, uh, fermented fish and things like that. Uh, staples of the Eskimo, uh, this propionic acid, um, you know, really increases uh, with the fermentation of those fish. So again, you have a lot of these rice eating cultures that are low in fiber, really into their fermented shrimp and fermented fish, Japan, all of Southeast Asia, China, uh, they really depend on these uh, fermented fish foods and the Eskimos who ate no fiber in their diet uh, consumed a massive amount and relied upon their fermented fish which they consider to be sort of their own personal superfood. I don't know if there's a coincidence there or not but it's very interesting. Um, again we talked about butyric acid in 180 degree health that is another short chain saturated fatty acid that is produced by the fermentation of fiber and also what's called resistant starch which is a type of starch that doesn't completely get metabolized by the body some of it gets fermented in the digestive tract the richest sources of these foods just so happen to be whole grains and and uh, you know fruits vegetables but mostly those whole grains brown rice things like that uh, that's the richest sources of these hemicelluloses and, and resistant starches that create the most fermentation of butyric acid and propionic acid which those fatty acids may be very very significant I'm not quite sure how significant but it, there is definitely some evidence that uh, fiber is not just some indigestible substance that passes through and uh, but it, that it has real pronounced significant metabolic impacts that uh, give you more metabolic energy on fewer calories uh, decrease your appetite in a lasting way uh, without causing your metabolism to drop and uh, could be something that's very very significant and may be in fact the reason and the primary reason why people and cultures who ate unrefined carbohydrates did not develop western disease such as type 2 diabetes and obesity and a lot of the different things that we suffer from in the modern world today so anyways consider eating lots of fiber rich foods I know that sounds strange from Mr. 180, Mr. Contrarian, but uh, you know, looking and investigating the subject uh, really thoroughly, it appears that fiber may have some inherent qualities that uh, are really, really powerful and really help us achieve what we're trying to achieve in you know raising our metabolisms and uh, you know decreasing body fat and all the things that everybody's looking to do. So anyway, that's it on this video for fiber and. Uh, that's it for me right now. Thanks again. This is Matt Stone of 180 Degree Health.